Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to talk about digital floating hydrometers. You may know it as a tilt hydrometer, but that's a trade name. So we're not going to use that name. Digital floating hydrometers. We're just going to talk about why you might want one, kind of their pros and cons, and then I'm going to do a comparison between the wrapped pill and the eye spindle. Kind of. A little bit of a comparison. Anyway, let's check it out! Potty time, potty time, potty time, brews. This song ain't no good, but we got nothing to lose. Okay, so first things first, uh, something you gotta know is a digital floating hydrometer is absolutely not a necessity in your brewery. Uh, a normal floating hydrometer will do just fine. A fl normal floating hydrometer costs about $8.99, where one of these bad boys runs you anywhere from somewhere in the $100 range to, well, I guess somewhere in the $100 range. This one right now is on sale for $79.99 at Brewer HQ, and these ones can be got on eBay for somewhere in the range of 70 to 80 bucks uh, assembled. A little cheaper if you want to try assembling it yourself, but I don't know how to solder, so I just went with the assembled one. And then I guess you need to ask, well, what do they do? They kind of work the same way as a hydrometer. Uh, basically, the more sugars that are in your beer, the thicker the fluid or the more viscous it is. As that viscosity kind of lessens, these things float at different angles. So where it may start out at the high wart or high gravity, kind of sideways-ish, as it uh, ferments, it's going to slowly float more vertical. I guess that's the technical best way to explain it. Something they do is they will give you your gravity readings at whatever kind of interval you want. The batteries will last pretty long if you set those intervals far. Now they recommend somewhere in the every hour you can get them to send a signal and they're, they'll last for many batches. But if you were really interested in kind of seeing how the fermentation goes really fast, you can set the intervals to pretty much whatever you want to set them up to. What these things do is they're going to kind of take the guesswork out of your fermentation. If you have a regular hydrometer, you're not going to be wanting to take samples every hour on the hour, all day, 24-7 until that fermentation is done. With these, it's kind of like you can do that, only you don't have to open up your fermentation vessel or make a mess or take any wort out of there that you want to turn into beer. I guess it's not wort because it's beer as soon as the yeast is in there. And these floating digital hydrometers basically just use sensors that measure the angle at which the floating hydrometer sits in the beer. And as attenuation happens, the beer gets less viscous, like I said. So it floats more upright. So it basically just checks these angles during the whole fermentation process. That's angles. Like I said, it'll be more sideways or horizontal if it's a high gravity wort. And as it attenuates, it's gonna become more vertical and these things measure that angle and will kind of associate that angle with a specific gravity. These things do come calibrated, but if you have a specific gravity range that you normally brew your beers in, it might be best to recalibrate it to that specific range. If you, for instance, like really high gravity beers, then you may wanna try one of those type of brews in order to calibrate it so it's gonna match that uh, type of brew exactly. If you're always doing like a light lager and only bringing it up to like say a 10.04 or something like that gravity, then you may want to try that just because the better you have it calibrated at the range you're going to use it, uh, the better it's going to give you readings for, the more accurate. And the other information you're going to get from this is the temperature and the battery life. So the application that you're sending the information to will have all three of those metrics, the angle, which is the SG, the battery life and the temperature. So when it comes to computer applications that these things work with, Basically, I've used mostly just Brewfather with it. Brewfather is an application that costs about 30 bucks a year, but maybe a little more, but I do recommend it as it's a very good program and it integrates very well with either the eye spindle or the uh, wrapped pill. I have used the wrapped pill environment, I guess it's called wrapped IO, and it, it, works, it works fine if you're just looking for that information on your, on your fermentation. And enough of the overview, let's talk about kind of the pros and cons about these things. So for the pros and the biggest thing that I like, because I like getting as many metrics as I can off my beer, you get the real-time gravity readings. Uh, readings every hour or half an hour or 15 minutes are really great to kind of see exactly where your beer is going, how it's fermenting and what it's doing there. You can see how it's going to free rise when it's fermenting. You can see the temperatures that you're kind of gaining and just a lot, of, a lot of information is good. The more information, the better. The next big pro on these is that you don't have to open the fermenter, which is going to save you the risk of infection. Most of the time you can have a spigot on the bucket, but every time you open that spigot to take a sample, it's gonna waste some beer. So, wasting beer sucks. Even if it is a uh, 100 milliliters or so. Next good thing, you're gonna know when your beer's done. In these things, you see a nice little chart. You'll see how the fermentation kind of levels out. And as soon as it's kind of sitting around the same number for a couple days, you know the fermentation's done. 
it takes the guesswork out of it, so you're not just gonna say, ah, whatever, I'll just ferment for two weeks. You can ferment for seven days, maybe even three days on a kvike, or less if you put a bunch of yeast in there. And finally, the kind of the thing I like is the integration with the apps. I believe uh, the Brewfather definitely works with them. I think even the, even the Grainfather's application and some of the other applications work with the ice bundle. Like I said, I've only really used the Brewfather, but it's nice to have that information in with all the other information for your beer, so you can have your notes, your gravity is kind of how it fermented. And then you might be able to see even the difference between kind of the same batch over time and see how it goes. And some of the cons with this, it's not any huge cons in my opinion other than the price, but some of the cons are it's not gonna be, if you're looking for exact numbers and you're like kind of the scientist-y type, unless you're doing the calibration kind of fairly often or calibrating it to a specific type of beer that you have, you're really gonna not have perfect numbers. Uh, the wrapped pill says it's good to 0.002, but I haven't actually done the checks on it to see how it works there. Maybe a future video. Hopefully not. I think I've done enough with the rat pill. And another thing that's going to throw these numbers off would be if you do kind of have a high Krausen or a or a large hop load, it might change the gravity of the or kind of change the viscosity of the beer, and it's going to just throw your numbers off a little bit. But you will still see that kind of gradual change in the chart over time. And like I kind of mentioned a little earlier when I was talking about the calibration. The accuracy is going to be a little bit different if you have it calibrated for say a high gravity beer versus a low gravity beer. Over time those numbers might be slightly different so if you have it just kind of set for your regular pale ales, if you decide to brew an imperial stout or something, you're probably going to have numbers that are off but again it's still going to show you the trend over time and that's really for the most part at least for me that's what I'm concerned about the most. I like to just know when it's done fermenting. And one last kind of mention about the cost, it is an expensive piece of kit but if you break 10 glass hydrometers, you've basically paid for it, so stop breaking hydrometers and buy one of these. Just don't break this because it's way more expensive to break. So one last point about these digital floating hydrometers is kind of my workflow. So when I'm doing a beer, I'm going to brew the beer. I'm going to check the initial gravity with a refractometer just because that's nice and easy right off the start. And then I'm going to pitch my yeast and throw in the digital floating hydrometer. I use the application throughout the day and week or weeks to check the gravity and then at the end of the whole process once I take the wort out or take the new beer out I check it with a regular floating hydrometer. This kind of gives me in my opinion kind of the most accurate way to use it although you are using three different types of hydrometers there you could get away with just using one and if I forget to do one of the steps I'm not too worried but really in my I'm using the wrapped pill or the eye spindle kind of as my intermediate information guide kind of really just again just want to know that fermentation curve. I don't think you'd have any issues using it as your main numbers, but with the refractometer, I just like knowing right at the start what it is. I don't want to throw it in and then just have to wait the 15 minutes or however long it takes to connect with the app, because sometimes those numbers aren't, uh, they don't go through right away. But overall, I really do like using the digital floating hydrometer with my brew day, or week, or fermentation. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's talk about the pros and cons of each. I'll start with the eye spindle and then we'll go into the wrapped pill. So for the eye spindle, I guess it's kind of worth seeing what it looks like. You have the eye spindle, focus there. It's in a jar. As you can see, it's lit up. It has a nice simple cap to open. Cap comes off and a bunch of stuff in there. You got a just a power switch right at the top and a USB it's a mini USB on this one. I think you can get some with, with the actual USB-C. And you can pop it out. Hope I don't drop it, but there is a kind of larger battery in there. And it's pretty much just a circuit board with a bunch of stuff in there. If you get really handy, you could do all the soldering yourself, but that's a project for another time or for maybe, maybe trouble brewing to do on his video since he does the soldering. But yeah, we'll put that back in there. Nice and easy, pretty straightforward and Close it up. So like I mentioned before, these can be bought on eBay is kind of the easiest place to buy them. And they come either assembled or not assembled. You can do it yourself if you dare. Uh, there's some really good videos online of assembling them and it looks like it'd be a fun project. So let's just go into the pros and I'm gonna be, when I'm talking about the pros and the cons, I'm just gonna be talking about the pros as kind of compared to the wrapped pill. So for the first pro with the eye spindle, it can be less expensive if you assemble it yourself. It would be a fun project, but if you want it assembled, you got to pay a little bit more. Usually I think it's about 15 bucks. So the amount of time you'd probably take uh, figuring that out and buying a soldering kit, it's probably going to make this pretty much the same price 
but it can be cheaper. One of the big things I like about this is that the case is much easier to seal. It's just a kind of like a normal juice top or whatever you want to call it and nice and sealed, no cross threading. I'll go into that in the wrap pillow review. And while it does uh, seem like it's a pretty quick and easy seal, I haven't had any issues with it leaking. I've used it for probably, this one I've used about seven or eight batches and I've even forgot it in the the uh, stainless steel fermenter while I was doing the uh, cleaning in place. So the spray ball was going at it with hot water for a while and it didn't leak or anything. So quite happy with that. Another thing about it is since the cap's a little bit easier and a little bit easier to open, it is easier to charge than the wrap pill. The wrap pill is quite a little bit trickier to open. So for the cons on this thing, uh, without Brewfather, it would be a little bit trickier to use. Uh, there are applications that are seemingly useful. I haven't tested them out, so this may be a bit of speculation, but without integrate, it's really easy to integrate with Grandfather, but it may be a little bit trickier to use a separate application for. Feel free to comment below if you've used the other applications and can prove me wrong, but I think this is great to use with Brewfather, but I wouldn't necessarily be as happy with it with the with another application. I know the wrapped pill has its own application and that is a lot easier to use. And the other kind of con in this, which could possibly be possibly be argued, is that it is a DIY hydrometer. The type of installation or soldering work you're gonna get on it might differ from vendor to vendor as a lot of them kind of make their own versions of it and have kind of custom PCB boards or something like that, whatever those uh, chip boards are called in there. But there's a lot of different people doing it and so their calibration techniques may be a little bit different. Maybe they use different gravities of work to calibrate it or maybe they don't calibrate it at all so you may still have to calibrate it once you get it. This came calibrated and it seemed pretty good for what I was doing. Okay, so the next one we'll talk about is the wrapped pill. This is Kegland's version of the digital floating hydrometer. Does the same thing, kind of looks the same. Just a chipboard with a big battery on it. It's not a normal size battery. It's not just your AA or anything. It's a kind of custom one. And the first thing you'll notice on this one is that it is a lot harder to open than the, than the eye spindle. And I'll show you in a second one of the main cons that I don't like about it. It has, wait for that to focus. It has super fine threads on it. And the funny thing is, when you look at the way it's threaded inside, I don't know if you can see that there, but the way it's threaded inside, it almost looks like it's set up like a die, kinda, so maybe it'll thread its own way every time, but it's four separate areas of thread, so whenever you put it on, you gotta try to really, really match it up good, and even there, as I tried to do a nice, as you're screwing it on, you can really see that it did cross thread. It seems to cross thread almost every time. I can't, I've never had it so it goes perfectly, but yeah, it seems to cross thread, but it does have two gaskets on there. So it will seal and I just screw it up all the way to the top and you're supposed to make a mark with a marker so that it knows, so that you know exactly the right tightness to go with it. So. It is the same every time. If you screwed it a little wider, it probably would float a little differently and then maybe the calibration would be off. But enough about that. It is a digital floating hydrometer and it does basically the same thing. So let's go into the pros of the wrapped pill. Uh, one of the big pros, the kind of thing I like the most about it is if you weren't using Brewfather or a paid application, it does have the nicer kind of environment to use. Uh, the wrapped IO is a great application, nice and easy to see, pretty straightforward. You can set up your different brews on it. Uh, not much more information past that, but another thing that's good about the wrapped kind of environment is that it will be eventually integrating with some other stuff. Uh, the Kegland's putting out a giant fermenter fridge kind of thing or a fermentation chamber. Don't know if that's gonna be ever feasible to buy or get shipped, but we'll see with that. And another thing that's coming is a temperature controller, which would be great, because it'd be nice to have the temperature monitored by this and your fermentation kind of change around as that if you had a chiller or something like that, or we're using their fancy fermentation chamber. But seems like Wrapped IO is kind of, they're trying to be innovative, so maybe a lot, of, a lot of new cool stuff will come out that will be easily integratable with this. It does come standard with USB-C, so it's, uh, I wouldn't say future-proof, but it's more future than the one that I have. But again, I think the one that I have, the, the eye spindle that I have is a mini USB, but I think the newer ones may come with the USB-C, so that's not really a pro comparatively. Another quick positive is that when this thing's laid flat, it'll go into a sleep mode, so the battery's really not gonna get 
kill too quick and with both of these I've used multiple batches no issues with the how the how it's working I mean it's still working if it has a battery it's gonna work and another I'm not sure quite yet if it's a pro on this one but it does have a Bluetooth sensor on it. It's not in the firmware. It's not set up to use Bluetooth with your phone. So you're going to be using Wi-Fi with everything. And I've watched a podcast. I'll link it below. But the the kind of in, intention was never to like have the Bluetooth hooked to your phone. The intention with the Bluetooth is so that if you are using their future kind of fermentation chamber or their temperature controller, it'll be linking with that or a piece of hardware or something that's always going to be set next to it. They don't. It doesn't make sense to always have to go close to close to the fermenter to get the signal, kind of like you do with a tilt, but I haven't tried those, so I won't go into the talk about those. And one last pro on this is that the eye spindle is a slightly bigger than the wrapped pill, so the wrapped pill will fit into a little bit smaller containers. So I didn't necessarily expect it to, but neither of these do fit into a glass carboy, so if you have dreams of that, I think your only option would be to actually use the tilt hydrometer, because those are a lot smaller. And finally, Let's go into the cons about this thing. Cons, again, the plastic is really flimsy. It's around the edges, it's pretty good, but when you open it up, around the edge, it's, it's a little bit more flimsy. It's actually not as flimsy as I was picturing, but it is half width kind of near the end. And I really don't like the way it's threaded. If it was just threaded normally or threaded a little more coarsely, it would be a lot better and maybe you get that better seal with it. And with that being said, talking about the seals, there are a couple O-rings there, so there may be a possibility that you'll have to replace those O-rings in the future or replace it with a whole new case. Uh, I haven't seen them on sale yet, they probably are, but eventually you're gonna be able to buy different colored cases for these, so you may have something that looks a little prettier or if you wanna kind of differentiate without just throwing a marker on it, you'd be able to have like say a blue one for your high gravity beers and a one of these or an orange one for your lower gravity beers. And I guess really what you've all been waiting for, although you probably already had your mindset uh, depending on what you're thinking about. But in my opinion, the wrapped pill is kind of the better buy, especially at the sale price that it's on now. You can get them for $79.99 or maybe by the time this video posts, they may be back up to the $100. But for $100, it's a pretty, pretty good deal. It's the cost of a bunch of the floating hydrometers, but you will get good use out of it. Overall, both of the hydrometers don't take much to clean. Uh, really just two little areas and this one where it does have the kind of two o-rings You'll see you should see if the water is getting past or the beer is getting past the first one And so you'll know when it's getting close to fail before it actually fails So that's not bad and another thing that kind of threw the wrap pill over the edge is that it is assembled by Kegland It's calibrated in-house so you know you'll get a little lot more consistent product Not that there's probably not a lot of people out there that really know how to it's put together the ice spindle a lot of people probably do it very well and have it calibrated perfectly But I figure if this is done in a factory They should have a lot of people that know what they're doing just doing one after the other instead of maybe somebody doing a batch of 10 or 15 once in a while and yeah, I really do like it better I just bought my second one which is probably way too many floating hydrometers for a home brewer But I guess that's just another reason to try to go pro or at least pretend I'm pro when I'm just a crappy commercial brewer hard to say that's a ways off, but hopefully coming. Hey, that's the end of the video. If you've made it this far, you might as well hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see some more brewing content. I did do a video on how to hook this up with the Brewfather application if you're interested. And I've done a lot of other grain to glass videos, kind of like this one. Might as well check that out. But, but! So, yeah, there's a dog. Got one now. Cheers.